Hi everyone! Welcome back to Small Sculptors. We have our last project today. Today's project is our paper mache pipe cleaner sculptures. For this project you will need the foam from your kit, some of your pipe cleaners, I'm going to use the little container that came in my kit, but you could also grab a larger bowl for making your paper mache paste in. Just ask your grown up about that. You'll need some water from home, a spoon from home, your newsprint paper. You might want your scissors, but you can also rip your newsprint instead. You want the small bag of flour from your kit, the glue, the clear glue from your kit, and you'll want your food colors. And you might also want to grab a paintbrush from home. It will make doing the painting later a little bit easier. So you can pause the video here and go get all of your supplies. Now that you've had a chance to gather your supplies, I'm going to move some things out of the way. The paintbrush, the food coloring, and your glue, we won't need until our sculpture is dry. So that might take a day or two, depending on how thick you do your sculpture. So this sculpture is going to take you more than one day to do. The things I do want to keep right now are my pipe cleaners, my flour, my newsprint, the foam, a bowl, water, my spoon, and my scissors. So I'm going to move my flour, bowl, spoon, and water out of the way. We're going to use those to make the paper mache paste. I'm going to move my scissors and my newsprint out of the way. We're going to use those to make strips to dip into our paper mache paste and move them around our sculpture. But we're going to start first with the base of our sculpture. So this part here is going to be the base of your sculpture. And then we're going to use the pipe cleaners to make the internal structure of your sculpture. This is sort of like what we did with the model magic and the clothespin earlier. We use the clothespin to be an internal structure or a thing inside of our sculpture that helped our sculpture hold the shape or be the shape that we wanted it to be. So with these, I'm going to use an end and poke in to my styrofoam wherever I want. And then I can take the other end and I can poke it in the same side or a different side. I would not recommend like this, just either the top or one of the sides that you can see from when it's sitting on the table. And I'm going to do that with a few of my pieces first. And what we're doing is we're kind of making a structure that our uh, paper mache can go around. So I'm going to be, instead of wrapping like tight around each little bit here, I'm going to wrap it around the big sections. So you can make yours however you think would look really cool. So you can try bending some of your shapes before you stick them in, and you can try bending some of your shapes after, and you can try like these two shapes are looped together, so however you want. So here are the shapes that I'm going to go with. So do you see how they're all sticking up out of my styrofoam base? So the next thing I'm going to do is set the framework for my sculpture off to the side, I'm going to grab my paper mache or my newsprint so I can make strips to dip in my paper mache. So I'm going to take my scissors and make some long strips. I'm cutting all of my papers at the same time, but if it's easier, you can cut individual papers at a time. You don't have to do them all at once. So that's probably enough for now. And I'm going to put down part of my sheet just so that I can not make such a mess. Um, you can also use 
like a brown paper bag like I have on my background too. That works really good for not making a mess. And the next thing we're going to do is make our paper mache paste. So we're not going to use all the flour at once. We're going to make little bits of paper mache paste, mix them, use them, and make more if we need it. So I'm going to take a spoon and take about one, two spoonfuls of my flour, close up my flour, and then I'm going to start with one spoon of water and mix it together. And I might need to add more. I probably will, but it's better to start with like half of the water. So if I use two spoons, I'll use one spoon of water and then I can add a second spoon. So I'll just keep adding spoonfuls of water until I get a consistency that is sort of like a paste. You want something that's sort of like uh, yogurt, how yogurt is, um, it does, yogurt's thicker than water, but it is not a solid. Like if you put it on your spoon, it can plop off your spoon. So I'll just keep adding little bits of water until I get something that is sort of a yogurt-like consistency. That looks pretty good. Do you see how it plops off my spoon? but it's thicker than the water is. So now that I have my paper mache paste, I'm going to actually show you how to wrap some of the strips around here. And then I'm going to finish the rest of it off camera because it will take me a, a little while to do all of my strips. But what I'm going to do is take my strips of paper and carefully put them into my paper mache paste, which is the flour and water. I'm going to make sure that I get everything kind of coated. Do you see how there's paper mache all over the strip of paper? And then you can use your fingers and kind of put one finger and one thumb and gently pull the strip through your fingers so that you get off the extra paste. So it should be wet with the paste, but it should not have big lumps. And then what we can do is find a place to start on our sculptures and start wrapping our strips around. The first strip usually is the hardest strip to do on each of the sculpture pieces. So if you need a second set of hands, you can ask your grown up to help you. So I'm going to do a few more and then show you how mine looks. So this is what the first bit of my sculpture looks like when I've wrapped it in my paper mache and my strips of paper. So you'll want to do that with all of the bits of your sculpture, however you want it to look. And I'm going to let this part dry overnight. Then I'm going to do this one more time so that my sculpture is thicker. If you want, you can do it right away, but it will take longer for it to dry overall. So I'd recommend doing all of the parts of your sculpture one time, let it dry overnight, then do them all a second time and let it dry overnight again. So I'm going to come back uh, to the video once this is fully dried and I'll show you how you can use the food coloring and glue to paint on it. And if you run out of the newsprint that came in your kit, you can also use newspaper or paper towels or even just some junk mail that you have lying around your house that your grown up says is okay to cut up for your project. And if you need to, you can also cut some of your strips a little bit smaller so that they fit into different parts of your sculpture better. So I'll see you in a couple days once this is all dry. But remember, I'm going to jump in my video so you can pause the video here and come back once your sculpture is all the way done. Hi everyone. So I've waited 
overnight or about for mine I did about two days because I did my layers of paper mache really thick on here and if you do one thin layer you could do one thin layer and then wait a day and do another layer so that your paper mache is nice and thick and that it gets hard. You just want to make sure that wherever you are leaving this to dry it has some good ventilation so that it actually dries out. If you notice that your paper mache is still sort of wet after a few hours and doesn't look like it's drying at all, make sure to move it so that it dries and it doesn't get gross. But now that we have a paper mache sculpture, and remember on the inside of these bits are all of those pipe cleaners that I used, but what we can do now is paint. So I'm going to make some paint with the things that came in my kit, but you can also use um, either tempera or washable paint from home or even your watercolors. Just make sure if you're using your watercolors or your tempera that you let this dry enough and don't glop on the paint because it will get your paper mache wet and if you don't let it dry well enough you could get some molding on your paper mache because it is flour. So if you're going to use the things from your kit you'll want your sculpture, your clear glue, your food coloring, your little cup and if you have some other little cups at home that your grown-up says it's okay to use you can use that or if you save some of the little containers like these guys that came with some of your other ingredients in them like the salt or your um your conditioner or lotion, you can use those two to mix and you'll just want a paintbrush from home. You can pause the video here and go gather your supplies. Now that you've had a chance to gather your supplies, I'm going to move a few things out of the way and I'm going to take some of my glue and make one paint color and then I'll use the rest to make a different paint color. So you can make as many different paint colors as you want. All you have to do is put some of your glue into your bowl or one of your other little containers that you've saved and washed out. And then you can start adding in some drops of your food coloring. If you want your paint to be really opaque, so a dark color that's a more solid, you can add in lots of drops of food coloring. If you'd like it to be more transparent, so more sort of see-through, you can add in just a couple. And if you want, you can even mix some of your colors together. So I'm going to try mixing a lot of blue and a little bit of yellow to see if I can get sort of an aqua or teal color. But you can use your food coloring to make whatever color you would like. So do you see how since I used a lot of food coloring and just a little bit of glue, I've got a really thick and dark, more opaque color. And then I can take my sculpture and I can paint on my paint wherever I think it would look good to have that color. And remember, you can make multiple colors for your sculpture. Your sculpture doesn't have to be just one color. It can be as many colors as you would like. So go ahead and paint your sculpture. And once everything is painted, so I'll leave mine just like this, but once you've painted your whole sculpture, you can let it dry again. So put it however it was when it was drying the first time, let it dry again overnight, and then your sculpture is done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed getting to bend some pipe cleaners, cover everything with paper mache, and paint your final sculpture however you wanted. I hope you've enjoyed all of the other projects in this MSCR Makes Kit. Remember, if there's anything that you're really proud of and your grown-up says it's okay, you can post a picture of it in the classroom. Bye!